and with that, we're going to get started. So today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, in the Legion series, we're going to talk about excuse me, real estate websites. Uh, this is the basics class. So uh, we are going to go as slow. We're going to cover some stuff. There's always going to be much, much more we can talk about. We want to get enough for you to be up and running and uh, kind of know, uh, well, we'll show you what we're going to ask you to know. So with me today is Angel. Hey. And we are here in the media room in the downtown office, media room being an abandoned office where we have a bunch of camera and radio equipment <laughs> and computer stuff sprawled across the desk. But for us, it's our little lab. So we're um, here and ready to share with you. And we're going to go ahead and just get started. All right. So you, this is the third um, installation in the series. Sure. Third or fourth? Third or fourth. Um, if you go to EliteScoop.com for slash Legion, that's where all the information about the series. So we're going to find that. Um, and then we have a few more for the rest of the year. So definitely visit that um, that page. Yep. And we, um, we, we're we posting the video of these once we get done recording them on the page with a list of resources and links to certain things you should check out. Um, last month, Angel and Poppy did a kick-ass job with the content uh, marketing segment, but I forgot to post it. So I just got the video uh, a couple of days ago, um, and I haven't gotten around to it, but I'm going to do it today. So you'll have their session. If you missed that last month, it's uh, well worth the time to go back and visit. And, um, and this one will be up there as well. So we're going to start off with a few things. And unfortunately, my the way that GoToWebinar works, it sometimes hides parts of the page. So I got to move it down so I can get where I need to be. Sorry. All right. So a couple things. Why do you need a website? Why does it matter? Um, everybody tells you you need a website as an agent. It is, um, uh, it, it's just an understood or believed thing of business people that they have a web page. And so as agents, um, uh, we take for granted that you understand why. So we're going to talk about the value of it today, and I'll go through a couple of numbers. I, I like giving you third-party statistics uh, other than just our opinions sometimes. So 91% of re uh, real estate clients use the Internet. 91% um, of real estate clients use the Internet. 69% of clients start with a local term. So when they're online and they're searching, they're looking for homes to sell or for uh, sale in Fredericksburg or um, – loans in Fredericksburg or something with a hyperlocal term or in Gainesville or wherever they are. 55% of buyers start on an agent site. So they actually do, they don't go to Zillow first. How, over half of them are going to visit one of your websites to get information. 78% of clients visit more than one website. 52% of all engagements start with a local search term. And 75% judge a business by their site. Now that last one is a uh, just a known marketing statistic. It is not a um, NAR statistic, but it's good to know. About three quarters, I certainly do, about three quarters of consumers when they're looking for something online, they are going to decide the professionalism of the company based on um, the, that first handshake. Your, um, your opportunity to be seen and be heard by them may be only your website. So if they get your name by a friend and they are I'm going to go Google your name before they reach out to you. What you say and do on your website and how professional it looks is going to be a very important element to you. Your website is also going to be a hub. This is where you're going to provide information. All the knowledge you have, the content through uh, the questions that you answer, uh, what information is available to your consumer, where they can get more, is all going to be hosted on this hub. And from here, we're going to be able to share it in other places. And we'll talk about the importance of sharing when we get to the SEO part in a minute. Yeah, so because everything goes back to your website, so all your social posts, anything that you do should um, point them back to your home on the Internet, basically. So um, so what you want to do is give give that consumer a resource. Why will they return to your website? Give them a reason to come back. So that means local content that they're not going to find anywhere else, like on a Zillow or um, Trulia or any of those pages, because you can't compete with those websites, but you can deliver um, local content that they're not going to find anywhere. So that's why they're going to come back to you. And so we're going to talk about the um, the returnability has to do with the design quality too, which Angel's going to talk about in a minute. Um, so let's talk about the business partner. 
Yep. So the business, it, your website is your business partner. It's working for you 24 seven. This is a reflection of you and your marketing. So you want to make sure that you have your best foot forward. Um, it's really building to connect with um, the people online and it's supposed to be designed to bring people in. So we're going to talk about all the different elements that comprise a website and, um, and how that can work for you all the time. Yeah. And it's also going to be your assistant. So if you have somebody who needs some work done in their house, having that vendor list and list of professionals available on your website for them to go and peruse saves you from having to go and find that information, find the list and send it off to them. If they can search for homes on their own, so you're not sitting there in front of them, MLS pouring over it all night long from your website and, and they can capture information. These are all things that can help make your business a lot easier to run, but it's gotta be easier to, and friendly to use. All right, so design matters a lot, <laughs> obviously. Uh, so there's some pretty basic um, rules with design. So the, the three-click rule for easy navigation, it just means that everything on your website should be able to be accessed within three clicks. Nothing should be more than that. Otherwise, it's buried in your website. Nobody's going to find it. It's going to be too cumbersome. Um, so imagine going in a store, like in a retail store that's cluttered and unorganized, you're probably going to walk away because you're not going to find what you need there. So good design for a website means it's all organized. Um, it's clean. It has information that they want. The fonts and colors are consistent and the um, graphics are professional. There's no clip art. There's no images that are pixelated or anything in there. Again, this is a reflection of your business and must resonate with your services. So meaning it shouldn't be stiff. It should be a reflection of who you are um, and it should tell a story and white space is good don't be afraid of that it lets people breathe it it just opens it up so it's they're not um, stressed out <laughs> when they go to your website um, so bad design if it's super busy people people aren't going to know where to find things outdated materials um, if you have too many colors for crying out loud don't use the whole rainbow you know, just use a couple of different colors in there and content that's generic. Um, you again, you want to be different. You want a differentiator for you and your website. And that's how um, that's how they're going to connect with you. OK, so oh, this is so anatomy of the website. Yeah, anatomy of the website. So your website is comprised of a bunch of different pages, right? Um, so first is your home page and then all your content. Um, content pages in there. The home page. So before oh. we go into the thing, just just to be clear, the website. When we say website, we're talking about all of the pages and all of the like you see here. You see several different stacked pages. All these things are collectively your website. Your home page is that landing page. That's the first handshake. It's um, it's like the the street view of a home when they get to that page. And, and like Angel said, white space is good, nice, clean design, not trying to pack a thousand things in there uh, is really important. So you have pages or the internal pages or, uh, of your site and then the home page is the landing one, just so you know that we're all on the same page when it comes to definitions. The home page, again, being the that front of the house, the 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 six second rule still applies. So when you pull up to a home that you're showing, your buyers make a decision about that neighborhood and that home from the front, from the street view. And they take about six seconds to design to decide if they like it or not. We use that six second rule of everything. When we meet somebody for the first time, when we encounter a new product, when we're listening to a TV show, generally the first six seconds are the most important. And if you have a bad six seconds, a bad handshake, it takes 45 minutes of positive experience to overcome. Now, when it comes to web pages, if you have somebody who's on your page for longer than three minutes, you're doing well above average. So you don't get 45 minutes. You don't, the client won't be on your page or any page for 45 minutes beyond listening to tutorials and video training. Yeah, so your homepage really should communicate the value immediately. As soon as they get there, they need to know exactly what you are. Um, and that helps um, start building that trust. So the, another important thing with your homepage is a load time. If it loads too slowly, they're going to leave immediately. Like it, it, So you need to make sure that, um, that your load time is good there. There's a plugin, I believe, a Google um, page speed plugin that you can do on WordPress so that, to make sure that your load time on your homepage is um, it's fast. Yep. Okay. 
So IDX pages, so Internet Data Exchange is a protocol that was developed in the late 90s for real estate. And what it does is allow us to pull in real time listing data from the multiple listing service over to your web page. So well, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. There was a point in time where we would say, you know, we looked at the statistics and we realized that the buyers overwhelmingly um, wanted home for sale information. That was the number one thing that they went online and searched for. That was the uh, that was the go to. Times have changed since the early 2000s when we first started talking about these things to now. The consumer goes to Zillow looking for homes. It's just a reality whether we like it or not. And then you nor I are going to pay more money than Zillow, Realtor, Call Bank, or any of the rest for SEO and indexing and promotion. So we have to look at what the consumer is now really looking for on an agent page, and it's hyper-local content, things about the neighborhood, the marketplace, all those things that Angel and Poppy talked to you about last month in your uh, content marketing session. But it doesn't hurt to have the clients uh, on your page and having that resource so you can send them back there. Remember, this is your hub. This is where you're going to send them back to after you've met them. And one of the biggest selling points for them is that Zillow takes 48 to 72 hours to load sometimes, depending on what source of listings they get. And not every broker has subscribed to allow their listings on there. IDX comes straight from your multiple listing service to your page and allows the consumer to check it out. Now, let me just say this. Uh, Angel introduced me to this question about a year, maybe two years ago of, is IDX really that important? And after hemming and hawing and listening to arguments and thinking about it for a while, I've decided it probably isn't a necessity anymore. Again, the consumer is looking on mobile devices. Overwhelmingly, about 81% of them are looking at mobile devices, which um, doesn't usually translate well when you're looking at your web page for IDX. Uh, and they have lots and lots of app options for those listings. Um, but if you are getting a design web page, a, a custom-made web page, you do want it on there because the designer is going to um, surround their content to that item, that IDX or, or ability to look for listings. If you're looking for more targeted stuff, and we're going to talk about that in just a little bit, then IDX isn't nearly as important. For example, when uh, Angel and I designed our team web page, um, we don't work with buyers. So we have, have designed it specifically for sellers. We've added Poppy on there as a buyer agent, so if there are inquiries, you know, they, they know who she is. But that's not our target, and so we don't need IDX for that. Again, the consumer can find that everywhere, so it's not nearly as important as it used to be. Right. So... When I said it, it's not that I don't think it is important. I think it's good to have it in there, but they, if you look at the buyer process, they're looking online for what, 52 weeks prior to purchasing. They're not going to leave the site they're comfortable with um, when doing their searches, like the Zillows of the world, um, and then all of a sudden transfer to your web page to, to do the searches. So I think it's good to have in there, but again, like Matthew said, it's I, it's not the end all be all anymore before, you know, they would say you need to have IDX on your on your website. But I think these days what's more important is the local content, not to say that you shouldn't have any listings on your page. I mean, you could do featured uh, listings or a blog post about an awesome listing you have. Stuff like that is going to resonate more than having just um, the multiple listing service on your website because they can get that anywhere. Yeah, the other part of that is that, for example, your your Zap pages and um, Playster. Playster has full IDX. Zap has listings, but they're listings that are amongst the Realogy partners, so they don't have the entirety of the MLS on there. Uh, oh, I take it back. No, they do now. They do. Sorry, yeah. they do now. Um, if you're going to, so if 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 you call me, if Latana calls me and says, I've been looking at a house online. I want more information about One Two Three Main Street. I don't go to MRS and search for 123 Main Street and send her the link. I go to my web page and send her the link through IDX. So, but just, again, sending them back to my web page is very important as a business practice. So for that purpose, you have IDX. But if you're doing your own website or you're doing custom stuff or you're doing an agent focus or consumer focus site, um, don't feel like you have to kill yourself and pay a bunch of money every month to get IDX on there. It's a good aspect of the site. It is not any more a critical uh, or necessity. All right. So for content or um, contact pages, um, it's a pretty self-explanatory page, but just make sure that it is simple. Um, not a lot of information. Don't ask for too much stuff. Otherwise, they're not going to 
um, they're not going to fill it out. So just simple name. Um, I would make the email um, mandatory and phone number if they want to mm -hmm. if they want to give that up and then how, what they need from you. So that's all you need in there. Otherwise, if they're just they're going to leave. Yeah, I mean, years ago, for those who've been around for a while, we used to require their name, number, and email address even to get MLS data or listing information on our website. There are other ways, and again, I'll refer you back to last month's really well done uh, content uh, market class. The slides were amazing, can I just say. <laughs> the, the, um, the, the, the content uh, class for last month covered content call to action. We'll just touch base on them here, but you need to have in a very obvious place a way for them to contact you. Now you'll notice on here that we have the fillable screen, and, and I do want to make a note here. You do not see on our web page our email address, and the reason for that is that scammers have software which will go um, what they call spider or look through your website for email addresses and then just start spamming the hell out of you. So we use the contact page because then the consumer or the, the yeah the consumer or the client has to fill in the page and hit enter in order to get to us as opposed to someone scrolling or spidering through our site and just getting an email address. So we don't have that email address on there. We have a phone number that rings our phones and then the, the address because that is a compliance issue, which we'll talk about in just a bit. Um, but we don't have the actual, you don't have Matthew at CDEVA on there um, for that reason. All right, and so this is an example of a, a content page and I want to spend a little bit of time here just talking about structure. So you'll see it at the top, where it says home services team contact, we call that the navigation bar. That's how I get to all the interior pages of my web page, my website. Um, then you see where it says August locks. This is a, a blog post, but any graphic at the top or um, uh, I just, there was another word I was looking for that doesn't matter. Uh, those are, that's going to be the header, okay? that graphic or that information <laughs> at the top. Over on the right where you see latest tweets or my client ratings, that's a sidebar. And by the way, the my client rating that comes from uh, real satisfied so uh, that's a, a plug-in and we can talk about what that means later and then the content or the stuff written in the middle is actually called the body of the page so those are the four basic oh and then the footer and then i'm sorry at the very bottom you have the footer where it says home services team and if you look and it may be a little hard to see through the webinar but at the very bottom we have matthew rathman angel piontech poppy merrill or licensed real estate agents in commonwealth of virginia uh, call Banker Lee, Fredericksburg, Virginia, and then our phone number, uh, the office phone number, that all requires stuff we'll chat about later on. Um, with the, and yeah, all right, and in the bio, do you have something? No. Okay, and in the bio pages, and as Angel asked me today, do we have to talk about bios anymore? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, I am not going to let this go. Um, I've had two agents in just the past couple weeks, people have been beating this drum for a while, have told me that they've gotten client contacts because they found them online and uh, read their bios. Um, this is, and by the way, if you look at the bio page, this is not how mine's actually structured. I embedded the video there because there are two elements to every bio page that are essential. One is a well-written first person bio, you talking to your client. They're on your website, they know you wrote it. Please don't write it as if um, you hired a professional to, to write your life story. Secondly is a video introducing yourself. Body language is everything. Body language community is 72% of communication. So um, when, when you have the video there, you're there to hear your voice and see how you interact and engage and then also read your bio. So you want both of those on that page and that should be a very predominant part. Remember, most people who are coming to your site now are not as they did 10 years ago. Uh, coming there looking for listings or coming there looking for information about you. So make sure that that's a pretty uh, prominent part of your page and that you have a well-written bio and video. Want to talk about yes. So this is one of those things that will keep your that consumer, your um, customer coming back with information that, again, they can't find anywhere else. So utility information about um, the area vendor a vendor list a market information that you should be updating on a regular basis um, any kind of niche marketing that you're doing or any kind of specialty that you have like smart home if you're certified certainly have a smart home section in there because those are the kinds of things that are trending and if they're looking for um, a local person that knows about that uh, you'll you'll be found that way so again just you know information that that is valuable to that consumer. 
Yeah, so by the way, I forgot to mention the web page that we have, and Angel and Poppy and I have been working on this to show you an example of what we think websites should look like, um, but also specifically team websites. So um, I've gotten their input and put together the site to, to give you a template to look at. It's not perfect, it's still a work in art, but I'll tell you, I've been working on a, a real estate agent website um, for probably since the day one that I started. Uh, I had one of the first ones in Fredericksburg and I did get a lot of business out of it before everybody had one. Um, and I still don't ever feel that it's perfect or hundred percent and neither will you, but we're going to get you as close as you can so that you can feel comfortable uh, putting it out there and using it. Sure. And it's, your website is never going to be static. It's oh, it should always change constantly because there's always going to be um, new information that comes up and that that should all be on your website. And so if you go to vahomeplace.com and you click on the client resources and look at utilities, we've listed a lot of the local city and state utility information. Under vendors, there's all the people that I would recommend for service. And I, I continuously add and change. There's people who, uh, well, as an agent, they piss me off, so I take them off the list. And there's people who impress me, so I add them. People who get in and out of the business or uh, just a person I never thought I would need in this business, an animal trapper, for example. Uh, is uh, going on that list pretty soon. Market information mm -hmm. is a realtor property resource report for that. Um, um, usually I do it for a year because I don't want to do it every month, but you could do it for every month. Um, but market information can be that, or it can be a PDF version of your CBX report mm -hmm. that you can embed there so that they have some real content because a lot of people are looking for local market information and, and Zillow doesn't have a real good report for that. So yeah. the, um, the vendor list is actually great. So we, I have, um, I live in Breckenridge and we have a neighborhood Facebook page and I see on there all the time, people asking about, um, vendors, actually somebody the other day asked about, um, a radon remediator. So that's actually where you can, you know, engage with the people in your neighborhood and send them a link to your vendors page on your website. And that's, you know, that shows them that you're an agent, but it's not in your face. You're not asking for referrals. You're not asking for anything. You're just giving them information. But in turn, you're also letting them know what you do for a living. So, yeah. yep. Okay. There's also targeted pages or specialty pages within a site. For us, for example, it's the home seller information. And actually, I could have used the smart homes because that's probably more of a specialty for us than, than just sellers. But if you go to our sellers page, you're actually going to see there's six components there. And again, because we're incredibly, um, I, I wouldn't say passionate, but, but I'm very, very strong on this three click rule. I, I want my information to be readily accessible and nice and clean and orderly. So you'll see the, the links there, you know, find your home's value, home marketing program, smart home resources, vendors. I want to be able to click and see what that is and make it nice and easy for them. And eventually we'll be putting video on there too to explain some of this stuff. The next is the call to action page. Now the call to action page is, um, is going to be a, uh, the information you're looking for. And again, in the, again, last month's session was very important because it talked about content marketing. But people do want to know what the value of their home is, and they don't just stop at the Zillow's estimate, especially if they disagree with it. They're going to go look for other resources elsewhere. Or you can see, uh, like uh, Angel mentioned, her Breckenridge Facebook group. If somebody there was looking for information about their home values or if somebody had a question about, hey, what are the values of homes in the neighborhood? You will be able to send them a link that they can go get instead of emailing them and going, hey, I can stop by and give you a CMA, which they don't want. They want to do the DIY thing, the do-it-yourself thing. Um, they can go to this link. Now, on our page, this get your estimated value, uh, home value now is linked to a landing page that's created in Cloud CMA. Now, we have done other, actually, I've done a webinar on this. There is a video now that's coming back to me. Um, I've done a video on this, and it's elsewhere on a lead scoop uh, on a re lead, uh, resources and cloud CMA. And it shows you how to find your landing page and then how to get the link so you can share it. Yeah, actually, if you go to your settings on cloud CMA, there's a lead gen tab. And that's one of the uh, links in there that you can grab is the, the landing page. Yeah, and so what happens when they click the link and go fill out the information, it sends their contact information into your Cloud CMA account, which is also going to act as a little bit of a CRM. It's going to send them information you've already set up for them, and you can design how you want that information to go back to them. So they have your resume and all your information as well as what they were looking for. This is one of the uh, best examples of stuff we already give you that could be used um, so very well to collect and uh, convert leads. 
So identity standards, we seem to have an issue with this constantly. Um, first thing is if you go to elitescoop.com slash resources, there's um, an icon for identity standards, and that'll give you all of the rules that you need to follow, all the disclaimers that you need to have for your web page. So uh, my suggestion is that you need to have all those, all the disclaimers on the bottom of every page of your website. So it doesn't matter where the consumer lands, they're going to see that um, that disclosure right away. So you need your name, company, the city and state of your office and uh, your license in Virginia. Um, there's also a link to the logos in Resource. on the resources page. So it's it's gonna take you to Smug Mug, but the password is CB Elite if you haven't already been in there. Um, and the use of the realtor trademark, we, at the bottom of the identity standards page, you'll see the uh, some examples of what not to do. So you need to, when you're using the realtor trademark for anything, you need to have your name attached to that. So you can't just say realtor dad or something like that. I've seen that before. Um, it needs to have identification of you in the term realtor. That's just a, um, an NAR rule. Yep. And there's a link here on the slide. And there'll also be a link on the Legion page when I post it today that, um, uh, sorry, Legion page of identity standards, a page that, that Angel set up on our resources site so you can go see what those rules are. And it's a layman's summary of those rules, which uh, is much easier to understand than just reading the stuff in bulk. Your website information needs to be easy to share too. So if you are putting something on there, a vendor list or um, the market information or how to get price in your home, you want your clients, your fan base and your tribe to be able to share that information too. So there's, make sure you have social share links on that page. Uh, if you're creating um, your own uh, web page, that's important. Excuse me, and uh, make sure that they're they're pretty evident wherever they are. You're going to hear another phrase very often called responsive sites. So responsive sites are essentially websites that modify themselves based on the tool or device you're using to look at them. So if you are uh, checking out uh, our web page on your iPhone versus your desktop, the the site needs to to um, change or morph into the device you're using so your client doesn't get uh, confused or lost in there or frustrated it doesn't work properly. So in a minute, Angel's going to talk a little bit about themes, but if you also do a, a, a designed, a custom design website, that's a requirement of them is that it needs to morph or change itself into whatever device the person's using. It's responsive. It responds to the device. For, for the purpose of this class, we're dividing websites into um, basically four categories of what we're talking about. There are a myriad of web pages. It's ubiquitous online. If you go look at real estate agent websites, there are page after page after page of companies that create these for you. Some suck, some are awesome. Um, we're going to talk about a couple options here that um, we support and we know well. Starting in the top left-hand corner is a hosted or custom site. So. A custom site is something you, uh, or hosted site is where a third party designed or holds uh, your website for you. If you're paying someone to design a website for you, there's a, we're gonna end the session with talking about um, how to, you know, some prim uh, primary questions we're gonna ask them and things we wanna talk to them about. The biggest thing is you want to be able to download your content and keep your web page if you wanna take it somewhere else. But there are companies like uh, Squarespace um, and some others where you can go and they already have templates. It's super easy. It's ready to make, uh, make live um, and you can maintain it. But when you, the trade off is customization. And so for most of you, you just want to set it and forget a website and Squarespace is a good option for that. Yeah, I, so my personal webpage is angelpiante.com is through Squarespace. I don't have IDX in there, but I can if I wanna set it up. But for me, I really just wanted it to be a resource. I want it to be my business card online. I want it to um, just have content. Uh, so Squarespace is great because I don't, I love design, I love the graphic stuff, but I don't necessarily know the code. I don't wanna to have to mess with HTML or anything like that. So Squarespace is web-based. Um, it's really easy to set up, uh, especially for somebody like me who. I really don't have the patience to um, to mess with that kind of stuff. So there's plenty of others, but Squarespace, uh, they have great customer service too. And that's another thing um, that you should be looking at. 
Yep. Um, Playster is, you guys have it for $60 a year um, through... So through NAR. Through Playster. Through Playster. Yeah. <laughs> through Playster. So what, yeah. um, okay, but actually, so NAR, I don't know if you guys heard, but a month ago, they NAR now has um, given everybody, all the realtors, a free Playster site, but it is very limited. So it only has, well, it has IDX um, and a couple of subpages. It does not have a blog. So it's basically like your Zap page. Um, it's pretty limited, but that's free now. Um, if you want to do the the full Playster, it's um, it's a sixty dollars a year. And what's great, we're talking about responsive sites. You don't have to worry about that with Playster because all their all their um, templates are are responsive. So Playster, just to be clear, there are two options for Playster. If you want the full website with all the bells and whistles and functionality and all the templates. Um, you need to go to EliteScoop.com forward slash resources, go fill out the form, and Colby will get you hooked up. We support Playster sites. Uh, Poppy and myself and Colby are around to help you, and, and Angel, um, even though she doesn't like HTML. Um, she, you don't need to with Playster. <laughs> you know, with Playster. Yeah, so mainly it's, it's Poppy and Colby uh, who handle helping you with your Playster sites because it is easy, and we support that as a company. Um, Colby is doing a Playster class. June 12th? Do we know what date? Oh, it's not June 12th. We don't know, but it'll be We're going it'll be to send out, out an soon. email. So yeah. it's going to be hands-on um, how to set up your Playster site, uh, messing with the domain, the DNS settings that apparently you know, I had trouble with as well. Um, but so he, it's going to be in June, and I believe it's actually already on the calendar. So if you guys look at the um, event calendar on Elite Scoop, it's already in there. But it's sometime this month. I should have looked at that before. Yep. And uh, Donna Jones is sending me a note. She does help with the setup of Playster too. She can give you some tips. Um, okay. So the, uh, so Playster, again, there's two. There's what we call the online business card, which is a very simple page. It does have IDX. That's the free version. June 22nd is Colby's Playster uh, class. It's going to be at the Mass Phonics office. Okay. June 22nd. Um, okay. And then then you go to the bottom, bottom right hand corner, you'll see the Zap site. Every one of you already has a Zap site. Please, 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 even if you've got 3,000 other websites. This is what Caldwell Banker is supporting, and this is what they're helping with the IDX and uh, distribution of the information with. Uh, so go to CV Exchange, log into your Zap, uh, your CV Exchange, go down there to the resources, log into Zap, and you can. Um, do some very basic stuff. Your bio, copy paste your bio, put your picture in there, set up a few fill in the blank things, and boom, you've got a web page. It's at least a good starter if you have nothing else right now. It is very limiting. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do with it, but it's a good site and it is being pushed out by Call a Banker on your behalf. And then in the bottom left hand corner is just WordPress. WordPress is a type of operating system for a website. It happens to be by far the most ubiquitous and most used on there, and it's free. So if you're doing a hosted site, if you go to GoDaddy, for example, and want to host your own and do your own thing and tinker, uh, WordPress is what you want. It's got the most support and most free stuff to help you. And so then we're going to talk about uh, uh, themes. Yeah, so you want to make sure that you pick a theme that conveys your uh, your personality and your services. So there's a lot of themes out there that you can choose from. Um, if you if you're going to be blogging, you know, make sure you pick a theme that will have your uh, featured blog posts readily available at the front page. Um, again, you know, as long as it's responsive and it's clean. Um, and it's well designed. You really, honestly, can't go wrong if you're um, if you're picking a theme. So. Yeah, and most of the things that saves you from having to design in the HTML and all that. So, and there are lots of companies who do those outside of our um, the services we have. With Zap, you, there are no themes. The site is the site is the site. It looks like everybody else's. With Playster, there's somewhere around 30, I believe, themes that you yeah. can choose from. Yeah, they have some great modern looking themes. Um, and we want you to ignore this incredibly ugly header that we're going to redesign there. It was something we threw up to get the site launched. Um, Colby manages this, but CB, cbedomains.com is actually a portal through GoDaddy where we um, provide URLs and hosting just like GoDaddy does, but at a different cost. It's cheaper to go through us. It's something that Colby put together a few years ago. 
So if you're looking to get a new domain name or a hosting account, then you can uh, just go to CBE domain. All right, let's talk real quickly about search engine. And again, the, the intention of this class is to be simple and not to overwhelm you with too much stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, so I'm going to keep it simple. With search engine optimization, it's a big phrase that everybody throws out there and everybody uses all of the time. And you're going to get, if you haven't already, you will, calls frequently from someone who represents themselves as a Google partner or from people who sound like they work for Google or third-party companies or emails will say, I just found your website online and I'm looking to help you promote it more and da-da-da-da. Um, most all of those are scams or they're ridiculous. So really some basic stuff that anybody can do when they're uh, creating a web page. On the left, you see a Google results page, right? This is what we call a SERP, S-E-R-P, search engine results page. There's no test, you don't have to memorize the words, but just know what this is. And we have three things that come up on the results. First is the title, that is the title of the page or the, the site, depending on what Google's indexed. Next is the URL, that's the link that you can register, that, that's the address of your site. And the last one is a description. It's the first pair or first uh, sentence two or three of your description of a page. So when you're setting up a web page, whether it's Zap, or whether it's uh, Playster, your own site, wherever, every page you create has these th these three options. What is the title of the page? What is the web address? And what description? Tell tell me the person who's doing a search a little bit about your page. Less is more. Uh, titles should be exactly what um, a consumer would look for in consumer ease, if you will. So make it simple for them to understand. The description is two paragraphs that people are going to look at quickly and scan and go, okay, that makes sense. Remember, most of you, when you search on Google, you scan this and you look for the title first to see if that's what I'm looking for. Then you look second to the description to see if that explains what I'm looking for. And then the URL is almost useless to anybody. People who have been around web design and, and search engine optimization for a long time used to tell you the URL is very important. So getting FredericksburgRealEstate.com could be hugely important to the success of your web page. That's not the case anymore. Google over time has greatly reduced the uh, value they put on the URL because they didn't want people who just lucked into getting the right URL to be found first. They wanted people with good content. So the description and the title are far more important. On every page which within your website, you will have the option of putting a title in there and describing what that page does. And both the title and the description should be different than every other page on the site. That means you need to sit down and really think through what that site is and what you want people to see on this search engine result page on Google. And we talk about Google because it's the only one that really matters. If you're using Bing or if you're using MSN or whatever the other Ask ones are. Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. You're gone back and gone. Um, if you're using any of those sites, there's, they're antiquated and no one's really working towards those because they're such a small uh, group of the market. Uh, Bing.com only works because that's the default search engine for Microsoft right now. And um, most people who don't know how to use Google or how to set that as their default will use it. But that's not where your consumers are. Overwhelmingly, they're looking on Google. And even more overwhelmingly, matter of fact, 97% of people will not go past the first 10 results. 73% won't go past the first five. So if you're not in the first five on that page for that term, you got some work to do. And again, we're not trying to kill ourselves to overcome Zillow or Realtor or CallBank or Century21.com for homes for sale. It's just not going to happen. Um, but these companies are calling you up. They're doing basically simple work that you could do and charging you a tremendous amount of money to do it uh, and then saying that they're experts when really they're doing just the basic stuff we're talking about. A couple of tidbits. Jessica. Yeah, so I was just um, thinking back to the first couple of slides where I think 69% of the consumers search a look. Uh, do a local search term. So, you know, just have that in mind on your description. Make sure you have Fredericksburg, Virginia or Gainesville, Virginia or King George, Virginia, whatever your service areas, make sure that that's on there. Did you already mention that? <laughs> no, that's okay. Okay. But yeah, so that's, you know, think about, we talked about long tail um, 
at the last session, you, you're not going to be able to compete with the keywords that doesn't have a local search term like homes for sale. Those are going to be your big dog websites that are going to um, that really have that market. So you want to focus on putting your um, your location in everything that you do, whether it's, you know, your SEO for your website, even your YouTube videos, things like that. Make sure your local um, search terms are on there. Um, only one URL. Uh, years ago, we used to tell you to do the URL farm or the web page farm where you could go register 15 web addresses and just point them all to the same website. It doesn't work anymore. Google caught on to that. Um, they only want one. If you have a forwarded URL and you don't have what we call a native URL, in other words, it's assigned to the page, um, Google won't index it anyways. So if you've got 15 web addresses that you registered and you're pointing them all, um, Google isn't indexing them, so they don't matter. Um, you only want one web address that goes to one web page. Page tags, these are words that, um, again, you'll, on each page, they'll give you the option to explain your page. So you have title and description, and sometimes you'll see tags. These are just single words that relate to the site, and you really don't need any more than four of them. So if I've got uh, seller information in Fredericksburg, Virginia, is the title of my page. The tags, which a lot of us are arguing are less relevant now, would just be seller, Virginia, Fredericksburg, and real estate or realty. Um, that would be the basic words I would use to describe it. Now, photos are different. If you've done a Google search before, you've seen that from time to time, memes or photos come up uh, on the page. That's because those pictures have tags or a title to them that relate to your search. And Google loves media. So video, 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 just making up mm -hmm. some stuff here. Yeah. Video and photos become pretty important here. So if you have a picture on your page, make sure it's not uh, named img1062b.jpg. Make sure it actually has a name like Fredericksburg Train Station or uh, home, uh, home for Sale in Fredericksburg, I guess, although we're beating that term to death. The photo should have some type of a title as well as the page. And when you add graphics on all the web pages we've talked about, it'll ask you to name the photo and describe the photo and give one or two words to describe the photo. All that information is there to make sure it's filled out. Uh, we talk about descriptions and titles. Google, content is king. Google wants fresh content. They're gonna index information that is posted on your site or updating your site uh, every uh, day. Actually, they're gonna, what they call crawl it and look over it. The more fresh new content you have, the higher in the ranks you're going to go. So a web page that's been uh, set up and not used for a year, you may still be indexed, but you're not gonna be indexed quite as highly as a page that has blog posts and new content added. And then also Google is indexing things that are on Facebook and Twitter over everything else. So if someone is tweeting about your page or someone is sharing your link on Facebook, including yourself, um, Google will capture that and start giving it more credibility in the indexing. If you'd like to track this information, you can use Google's free tool called analytics, google.com forward slash analytics. It's, it's, um, it's a moderate level skill set. In other words, it's not super easy um, to get it 100% right, but you can go in there as a novice and figure it out pretty easily, and there's a lot of help uh, online for it. But you want to track the user and the statistics and page views. Excuse me. Just yawning here. I'm just falling asleep in the middle of the lecture. Um, anyways, you want to monitor uh, how many pages they're going to uh, when they get to your site. So in other words, if they go to your site and they're on one page and they leave, um, in less than a minute, that's not good. You're not, you haven't, you haven't gotten good content. Let's call on that page. a bounce rate. If they go to one page and then they leave immediately, so either your site is off-putting to them, <laughs> or it's boring, or it's it's basically a measure of quality for your website. If it's irrelevant to them, they're going to leave after one page. So that's a bounce rate, and that's what you really um, want to look for there. So, yeah, go ahead. I don't know whether I should go because then it sounds like you gave me permission. I'm just kidding. Okay. So if, if you look on this site, it says 61% bounce rate. That's actually not bad. Um, about 60% is tolerable. That's when we go, okay, 60% of people got here, couldn't find what they were looking for, or didn't, this wasn't exactly the right fit, and they moved on. Anything over 60%, mm, a little bit more worried. I'm not getting their attention. I'm not giving them an easy way to find what they want. Everybody online wants the path of least resistance. They want good content quickly. Um, having 4,967 views a month is exceptional. It's very good. And you can look on this one in particular, it's got um, 
3.87. They're looking at four pages before leaving a site. That's fantastic. If you get to two pages and they're on your site for longer than a minute, that is a big win for real estate sites because there's so many people competing in that space. That means they found value and found a reason to stay there. To get those kind of numbers means video, 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 because people who are lingering are usually watching something. No one wants to read anymore. Although I say put your bio on there because there are some readers out there that's more for Google. People want to watch. They want as much information in the shortest period of time, and video does that. So whatever information you're trying to put out there, open up your iPhone, take some video, upload it to your website. Um, yes, video is good, but if you're going to do a video, um... For example, if you're doing a neighborhood video, you certainly post that video on your website, but also um, transcribe that video and put that on the bottom of the page because that's what's going to um, work for your SEO. So you can do the video and most people are probably going to watch it instead of reading, but in order for it to be indexed, you need to actually have the text on, on the bottom. Yep. Okay. So then their consideration. So let's say you go, you know, Playster is too simple for me or Zap is too simple for me and I want something with that's more robust and more information and, and I want to maintain it on my own. Um, you're going to get phone calls from website vendors all the time. Um, they're going to stop you at trade shows. They're going to send you uh, letters. They're going to advertise everywhere because it's big money selling web pages to real estate agents because none of us want to learn the skill sets to do on our own or, or we have other things to do instead of it. There's a couple things you need to look out for, though. Um, just because you spend a lot of money doesn't mean you get a good return on your investment. And um, you're, you'll be convinced. You'll hear stupid lines from salespeople all the time that will say, if this gets you just one sale a month, it pays for itself. Well, if you do that four or five times and you got four or five sales, that one month where you don't get a sale out of it, that's going to be the month that you go bankrupt. You know, you're going to start in the downhill trend. Uh, of not being able to stay up. So you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on this. And there are sites like Boomtown. And I particularly like Boomtown. I like their design. I like their engagement. But they run about $1,500 to $2,000 a month. That's a pretty expensive investment. If you're looking at doing this as a website, you better have taken some of our other classes and be fully invested in managing leads quickly and skillfully to, in order to gain on your investment. Number of leads does not equate to business or paying for the asset or the marketing tool. It is the quality of leads and your ability to convert them and convert them well. So if six months from now, you're spending $2,000 a month. You look at it and go, that's such a waste of money. But you've gotten 3,000 opportunities out of, out of it. We know that 45% of all online inquiries buy or sell. They do it within a year, typically. So it's a long-term game. You got to look at what you're doing with the content you have there and with the contacts you have there, not just the tool. There are less expensive sites. MRIS has sites out there that are $25 a month and have IDX and those things. But they're very, very, again, simple. If you're going to do simple places where you be. If you're going to get a company like Story Collab in town builds web pages, um, they're a little pricey, uh, especially for most agents. But you're going to get, they're going to do exactly what you want. There's going to be full custom. They're going to explain to you why you need this and let you make decisions. But you then have to ask other questions such as, does it have IDX? If not, how do I get it? Where, what kind of vendors are out there for that? Who handles the search engine optimization? And a lot of these companies will say, oh, our, our, all of our web pages are SEO ready. All that means is that you can fill in the blanks and add content and they give you the option to do that. All web pages do that. So uh, all of them are SEO ready. It's just a, a phrase they use to let you know you can do the work. If they're doing the work, there's going to be a price for it. So Boomtown does do SEO work for you at that price. It's um, There's always more you could do, but they'll do it for you. But again, it's 1500 to 2000 a month. All websites can be potentially generating. That's what we're aiming for, the consumer to get there and be converted. But really, lead generation online is done by big, big companies now and generally done much better than us. So every once in a while, you'll get leads or inquiries from your site, but that shouldn't be your primary focus of having a site. Almost all of them have CRMs. Remember, you already have these. If you have them in Zap, uh, you have it in Zap, you have it in Cloud CMA, you have it in CoreFact. There's a number of CRMs you already have as part of your um, affiliation here. I do beg you to pick one and use it, but we'll just keep hammering away at that until you guys listen. Uh, duration of the contract. Um, 
a lot of these website companies are trying to push for three-year contracts. That's much, much too long, or way too long, rather. It's much, much too much time. Um, month to month is better, so you can cancel it whenever with 30 days notice often is required. But if you can get a, a year, nothing really longer than that is what you're looking for. But if you can get a year, that's probably going to be your best bet. That's probably how much uh, of a dedication. Find out what is involved in canceling and if you're willing to pay that price because not all of them are very friendly. Uh, when you go to cancel, they make it hard on you and it can be very expensive too. And then lastly, remember, ask them who owns the con, uh, uh, content. If you're paying them to build pages and these things, you want them to be able to send you a DVD with it or a thumb drive or Dropbox, all these, so that if you get tired of working with them, you don't lose your content, your information, and have to start again for other people. Some of these web page companies, that's how they make their money, is they know that we're all too busy or too lazy to redo all the work we put into our websites. And so they sell you bad stuff thinking that you're not willing to go elsewhere. If they send you content or you can copy paste it, save it to Word or wherever, um, then you can happily move on to another site with another template and uh, do better. A right? couple questions to ask when you're doing that. All right. A couple of resources for yes, you. Yes, a couple of resources for you. For Playster, you can go to elitescoop.com forward slash resources. That's how you can get started with your Playster site. And again, Colby is doing the class on June 22nd. So if you don't already have one set up, um, that'll be a good class to attend. Um, if you're doing a Playster site, you would still want to do go to cbedomains.com to buy your domain. And then uh, Colby will help you in that class to um, make sure that your settings are correct so that that domain is pointed to your website. So um, Zab, Donna does a million classes on Zab. So just look at the schedule um, and she helps, she'll help you set that up. You can also go to cbexchange.com um, for Zap information. And in the bottom right hand corner where we have the question mark, there are uh, so many providers out there through custom work or themed work, uh, IDX solutions, all of the rest. Um, ask around before you affiliate with any of them or sign up for another web page. Um, ask me, Colby, um, probably the two of us will probably have the, probably the broadest knowledge of them. But sometimes you guys, call, matter of fact, just a couple of days ago, one of, one of you called me and asked, hey, I've been about this company, what do you think? And I had never heard of them before, never reported to be, you know, this big up and coming real estate website company, never heard of them. And I kind of keep a, a list of the good ones. Uh, and then I went and looked at their work and it sucked. Now they're all going to say, we'll give you references, but they're going to give you three or four clients that they gave free websites to in order to get positive feedback. Um, you need to go and look for other clients who use them or ask around on, you know, real estate websites, Facebook sites, or, or within the company before you sign up for any of them. For the, for the majority of you out there, the Playster site does everything you need to do. Now, I just want to say, we keep going to Playster. We don't make any money off of this, right? Even though we're reselling it through um, uh, Call Banker, we're doing it at the same cost. You can get it on your own if you wish to. When you do it through us, we can help you manage it. This is an agent-added service. Again, we make no money. We are giving you Playster because it is inexpensive. It is the best value you can find for what you're, you're paying. Um, and uh, again, it's a great site. They have lots of themes. There's good, it's easy to add content. It is agent friendly. That's why we, we keep sharing that one. Uh, we don't push Zap as heavily. You need to go make sure all your stuff's there and then it's done, right? There's not a whole lot of modification or unique stuff you can do to it. So you already have it, make sure it's complete and ready to go. But um, it is probably a little less than what you need. Whereas Playstore is, is probably good enough. Sure. Because what we're doing, I mean, especially with this series is we we're talking about content and how to, um, you know, push everybody to your website. Zap does not give you the ability to have a blog. So that's the main difference between Zap and Playster. Um, with Playster, you can add a lot more content and have a blog with Zap. You can't do that. Yep. All right. And two resources I recommend. If you're a reader and you want to go grab it on your Kindle or your iPad, um, Steve Krug's book, Don't Make Me Think, Revisited. This is the latest version of it. Um, it's, there's an older version on there that you can, on um, Amazon, that you can get for fairly inexpensive. This version is about 18 bucks. It is fantastic. It's really well done and it bakes, breaks down what consumers are looking for in a web page, how to engage, and how to work with them. On the left is the Playster Academy. Whether you have a Playster site or not, doesn't matter. 
there is a lot of awesome stuff on there. There are free PDFs and eBooks you can download to talk about all the stuff we're talking about with marketing, but specifically two or three good ones on uh, web page. And then there's also a bunch of how-to videos and presentations you can download to use on your own for marketing. It's it's a fantastic resource and it's all free. Yep. Um, actually, we don't have it in there, but HubSpot is also another great resource for education. So they have um, free certifications for inbound marketing, but they also have a lot of blog posts that are interesting. So I think a few days ago they posted um, a blog post about an, an anatomy of a blog post, what makes a great blog post. So those are the kind of things, that, you know, if you have a few minutes, just go to um, blog.hubspot.com and there's a bunch of stuff in there that you can, you can read. And we'll put a link to that in the show, no show notes on yes. the lead. Uh, Jim, we like saying show notes because we sound very <laughs> professional with our video cast and podcast now. Um, just, uh, I, I do think this is a good time to mention this again. And I know all of you have heard me say this a thousand times. In order to be successful in this, you are a business person, you're an entrepreneur, and you're going to have to invest in different aspects of your business, lead generation, marketing, branding. Those are all important parts of what you do. And you either do it or you outsource it and pay somebody else to do it. To do it well, you have to take time to study about it. This should be budgeted time throughout your week. Um, right now, I, I'm going through a, a book, um, uh Road to Recognition. Mission, so. Yep. And an angel and I have been listening and reading a book called Zappos uh, Pursuit of Happiness. Um, we're investing in our marketing and what we do and in our business through studying these resources um, so that we can do better at it. That should be part of your budgeted work week. And I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes right now going, I, I'm trying to figure out how to get to my showings and get my listings in MLS. You're going to have to do better on, on balancing your hours and then take only that what you can handle that gives you time to do this well take half of your netflix time and <laughs> put that to good use <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely um and again audiobooks are fantastic for this stuff there's lots of good marketing stuff in audible there's some free ones out there that you can listen to while you're working out at the gym or in the garden or whatever you do but you got to spend some time getting to know this stuff pretty well it is important to the future of your business um also podcasts so you can listen to po marketing podcasts or whatever you want and they're um, easier to digest because most of the time they're uh, 30 minutes long. So it could be, you know, on your way to a listing, you're listening to a marketing podcast. So I, Matthew and I use Overcast um, app for podcasts. So you can um, download that on your device and all the podcasts are, are in there. Just pick a search term and it'll show you all the um, podcasts that are available. Yep, and uh, I tell you what, we'll add some to the lead gen page, some recommended Matt and Jen or Matt and Angel's recommended. Um, it's going to be a really lead long gen, page. Lead gen <laughs> topics. Um, all right, so that's it. So again, go back to leadscoop.com, lead gen. Look at the other sessions. These are all meant to go together. So if uh, you can't skip them, you gotta you gotta pay attention to them. And that's all we have. So I'm gonna just leave it open for a second to see if there's any questions here in the chat block. Um, Poppy has told us, Pop Tart McGee has told us not to mess with her Netflix time. <laughs> okay, nap time. Maybe take one nap out of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Um, <laughs> Poppy is getting plenty of naps at the Spotsvania office today. <laughs> All right. So, again, down in the questions, if you have any, uh, please ask them. Otherwise, we are done. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for your investment in the series. Um, we've been really, really happy with not only the people who are participating with it live, but also watching it after it's recorded. So with that, we are out. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, now the questions are coming in. Um, okay, so a question from Sabrina. Do we have to worry about the CB logos and the blue on our custom pages? Yeah, that's why on leadscoop.com forward slash resources, she hears talk about every, I feel like I say that in my sleep. If you go to that site um, uh, and look at identity standards, the link we gave you earlier, we have laid out what is required by uh, NAR and Virginia and Caldwell Banker, what colors, there's a, um, I just forgot the name of it, the colors. Uh, brand identity standards yeah. have the hex IDs for the colors to tell you exactly what colors need to be in there and the only one and only approved logo. Mm -hmm. Right, and there it'll it'll give you options for um, 
highlight colors for the coal banker brand. Um, you know, it just needs to complement each other. Like I wouldn't choose anything that, um, so we have the coal banker blue is um, pretty dark. I mean, I wouldn't choose another shade of blue that'll clash with it. So, I mean, it's just common sense, but, um, but it is all on the identity standards page on the lead scoop. Yeah, and actually there's, um, Angel, if you remind me, I'll write it down on a note. Um, there is a page that you can go to and you can enter in the ID, the color ID of um, the blue, for example, and it'll give you compatible colors for that. Color lovers, maybe? I think that's what it is. Okay, so color, I believe they spell lovers differently. L-O-U, let me look real quick. Okay, while she's looking that up, and actually we'll put that in the show notes uh, on the page later on today. Um, okay, so I've got a lot of questions here, so I'm getting through those. All right, so colorlovers.com, it's C-O-L-O-U-R lovers.com, and that gives you um, palettes. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm getting some SEO questions, and so let's see. When you're adding local terms, can you give me examples? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to say instead of what buyers need to know about buying a home, I'm going to put what Fredericksburg buyers need to know about purchasing a home. Um, and you're just going to make sure that, the, that you're, especially in the first paragraph, at least actually no more and no less than two to three percent of your content should have local terms. And when I say local terms, I mean city and, and state or city or county that you're in. Um, those should be important words to have embedded in there in that first paragraph. Um, <laughs> And you may want to talk about you know, my favorite, my top three favorite coffee shops in King George, uh, my uh, favorite pet store in Fredericksburg, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you have at least one, one reference to your city, county, or region. Um, and when cu customers are Googling terms, what are the most popular terms people use? Uh, actually, there's a great tool for that. If you go to Google, uh, search for Google AdWords, or actually uh, Google, uh, we'll put a link to it. Um, <laughs> oh, a, a, a Google Webmaster Tools has an ad, AdWord tool in there. It's free, and you can go search real estate in Fredericksburg, and it'll give you a list of all the popular uh, uh, searches that are associated with your key search. So, and, and it's different for every area, um, but that'll give you the best. Uh, best reference from Google. Sure, but also look at your analytics. So when you have analytics set up on your website, it'll tell you what they search for in order to get to that page. So if for some reason you're seeing an influx of people going to a specific blog post, I would do more of that. Focus on the the things that um, that bring the people in. That bring the people. <laughs> <laughs> Build it and they will come. Yes. All right, I think I've exhausted all the questions on here except for the smart ass comments. So we're gonna go ahead and close it up now. <laughs> Thank you again for all of your time today and we look forward to seeing you on the office. Bye. Bye.